Okay, now it starts. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another podcast with me, Kishan Morar. And on today's episode, I have with me a very special guest, someone who has been one of many people instrumental to my own wellness journey, a wellness studio founder, an inspira- inspiring yogi, and a learning experience designer. Well, please welcome Milan Madev. Welcome to the show. And thank you for, for accepting my, uh, my request to be on the show. Thank you so much, Kishan. Thanks for inviting me. And I'm really looking forward to, to being here. Amazing. Uh, let's get into it. Uh, so how did you get into into yoga and, and the practice of meditation? Uh, so I started doing meditation as a kid. My uh, mom used to do like family meditation. So Friday nights, my brother and I should make us lie down. She would light candles and she would do a bit of a guided practice with us. Um, and as I got older, that sort of slowed down a bit. But um, I picked up more of the practice of yoga. And it was during university that I actually started going for yoga classes and it was at a fitness gym. So more exposed to this fitness type of yoga, which I I loved back then. Um, And then I lived in India for a bit after university. And that's when I deepened my yoga practice and really got more into it in terms of into the the teaching and the practice of yoga. Um, Oh, wow. Amazing. Yeah. Been doing it ever since. So how is it like living in India and then also being in a country where I think meditation and yoga is like, you know, was, was founded basically, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, how did you feel like being in that environment and, and, you know, and, and, and practicing yoga? Yeah. Um, so I, I think it was, it, it, it sort of gives it more of an authentic experience. So you start to realize that the West has also taken the practice of yoga and put a spin off to it in certain parts. Um, and being in India, well, I started off it in, in Mumbai where it was still proper city, uh, but there was still something very authentic about the practice where it became about more of a lifestyle. Um, and when I did my teacher training um, with a yoga school in Rishikesh, really at the home of yoga, um, it's just a whole different experience and a whole different um it's, it's, it's a different sense of this um, wholesomeness, if I could say, when it comes to yoga. Yeah, I can, I, I can get that feeling. I can imagine just like being in that environment and just experiencing it must be must be one. I think a lot, pe- a lot of people are actually would like to experience in their lifetime. Yeah, definitely. No. But I think also, though, what's so great about that, like the practice about it is actually trying to take take that whole sense of yoga and you know that feeling and that experience with you in the mountains but be able to practice that even if you're stuck in traffic um, you know and being stressed out and i think that's what we're trying to learn about when we we practice yoga is to bring the skills back into our daily lives i think coming from south africa you know the traffic what it's like (laughs) you know when the taxis go past and you're like you know you have that urge to like you know use some profanity and you're like okay okay I think deep breath in and out. Yeah. As long as it didn't there was no accident, you're okay. Yeah. Oh amazing. Um so I want to talk about like your 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 journey and what role does yoga bring, you know, for you? How does it how does it play its part into your everyday life? Okay. Um so for me, I think yoga is just a tool in my whole well being journey. Um and I feel like every day it's sort of like every day we need to practice our well-being and every day we need to spend time dedicated to it. Um, And yoga and meditation have just been, you know, part of this toolkit of things that we have to help us um, have the sense of well-being. Uh, For me, yoga, I think, has really helped me. So being in the corporate space as well, I find that yoga helps me to ground and just connect again to myself. Um, I think a lot of people can relate when we in corporate jobs or whether we parents rushing around with kids and you know, everything that we have to do with life, um, we tend to get so overwhelmed and like in this state of constant rush with everything. And I think having yoga to come back to is my moment of disconnect from the world, but also it helps me to focus in on myself for that moment in time. Um, I think it's also been really useful in my own health, with my own health. Um, I find, so I suffer with arthritis and joint problems which flare up when I'm stressed and just being able to maintain daily practices with yoga, I've been able to control that and, you know, not suffer with those problems. Um, And I think 
there's lots of other health benefits that different people will find depending on what they need. But I think for me, it's just been a really great tool to help me control my stress, to help manage my own personal, like my health. Um, and then to take those practices because yoga is more than just asanas or, you know, um, postures on the mat. It's also about your lifestyle and bringing that into my own personal space. And I like to tell people, so a lot of people in my day job tell me, you're always so calm or you, like, <laughs> you know, we have this hectic deadline, but you're still so like peaceful about it. And I like to dedicate that to my practice of yoga that just helps me to have a bit more self-control um, and maybe even self-awareness of my emotions or how I show up in front of other people. Yeah, I think years and years of practice. Uh, but it's, it has to be a continuous practice, as you say. It has to be something that you're really mindful of doing. And I, like a lot of people, I think, you know, just try something and then, you know, they leave it for a little while and they're like, okay. Whereas like I feel when I started, the, when I started my own journey uh, with yoga, meditation and stuff, um, it becomes, it has to become part of your, your daily, like your mindfulness makeup, if that makes sense. And in terms of like, you know, when, when things are not going your way or you're having, a, like you said, a stressful, a stressful day or even just a moment, you know, in real life uh, to bring back, you know, just the breath work uh, where we, where yoga teaches you how to, you know, to center yourself with a certain, just to calm the, uh, the, the nervous system down so that cognitively we are aware of where we are and what we're doing. Um, because like you said, you, you struggle with arthritis and, uh, you know, joint pains. And um, I know that that can't be easy, you know, when it flares up. And sometimes you forget that, okay, I have this, this tool in my arsenal to help me, you know, just to remedy that, that, that feeling of pain. Yeah, definitely. I really like what you said about the mindfulness makeup. And I think um, it is definitely one of those things that you need to keep in hand and in, in that to, to reach into whenever you need it. Yeah. Yeah. So just to share like with the viewers, my own story, like I struggle with, I never knew I had anxiety until, you know, I really I started having like um, panic attacks. And, you know, when I was going through my own, my own issues, um, that's what, that's when I was properly introduced to, I think, uh, you know, the, the practice of, of breath work um because in that moment you, you you i think you're so you're so stuck in that moment that you, you you can't really comprehend what's what's right or what's real and what's wrong uh what's what's the feeling of of calmness at that point in time so i think the practice of of breath work is is one that's so simple but we take for granted you know every single day yeah no definitely i completely so, agree with you and i would like to thank your like you and your mom uh, especially for 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 teaching us you know those practices because i think you are the first person i've come to you and your mom uh, I've, I've actually like given myself to the practice and you guys have made it feel so so warm and welcome it's like a you know like a, a homely practice like people that you can actually you know say okay um, today's going to be a good day i'm going for my practice and the learning and the teaching that you guys do is so you know that's the word to put it it's so warm if you, if you get what i'm saying like yeah it's you know you get emotional just thinking about like when you were going through so many so many pressures of life or any scenario and you know we just come and do a practice with you on a saturday morning and it was just like you know your day just smo goes so smoothly after that because you know in your mind that you've done you've done something for yourself in not in a selfish way but so much more in, in of an enlightened way to say okay I've gotten my my mindfulness practice in today and whatever happens after that it's okay yeah oh that's really kind of you to say that and i'm i'm glad we were able to to help you on your journey um and i think with you sharing that about anxiety i've also uh had an experience anxiety um with my my job and you know what you said was so true that you you forget what's right and what's wrong and um like what's real and what's what's not and in my own you know moment where i had this anxiety with work um it got so bad that when i had actually collapsed and you know ended up in hospital at that moment it's so difficult to remember you know breathe and take you know just relax and have these deep breaths but then i think once you once you like consciously aware of that like you know this is something that you can use and you can do it helps you and that's when it you know you start to remember and i think for me that was my turning point when i was in hospital and said well 
I teach this and I know what to do. How did I end up here? And it was also a very good learning for me to, you know, we say we put up to create healthy boundaries um, at work. And these are boundaries that we put up for ourselves as well. When we practice, we, we have boundaries of listening to our body, listening to where we're at so we don't push ourselves or hurt ourselves. And I think the same thing is so important then to create those boundaries in our personal lives, work lives, um, and then use these tools to help us to navigate all the, the stresses that come with everything else. Yeah. Oh, no, definitely. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not one where we're going to say, okay, we're going to remember it all the time. And then some, there's some experiences in life we're going to go through that are, are probably like beyond our, our control of, of mindfulness. Like it's hard sometimes just to like stay in the moment and be calm. And I know I have, I have that anger fuse in, in me. Like sometimes you, you gotta, you gotta get me to that point, but I do have, uh, I think an, uh, a bit of an outburst. Uh, and sometimes it's just uncontrollable. It, it's just, it just happens. And. You know, not every day is going to be like, okay, I'm going to remember, I need to breathe. Okay, I need to calm down. <laughs> it just depends on, on the scenario that you're in. Then. Yeah. But it, it, we're learning every single day. And it, it, I think it's an important tool. Yeah. Those, yeah, those, those emotions are just as important. So to feel angry or to feel those outbursts, they're just as important and needed as, you know, the emotions of being calm and relaxed and all the time, you know. So you do need that balance of emotions to, to grow as a person. You know that those are the things that take you through each day no 100 percent. we're human beings and every day we regulate emotions in different way and certain scenarios just uh, it's difficult but uh this is why we this is why i'm like trying to like encourage people it's okay or advise people it's okay not to be okay all the time you know it's not the same as just saying oh i do i do yoga practice or i do a meditation practice that i'm going to be there's some form of you know calm person 24 7. it's not and that's the reality of it. Like I always, I took it for granted. And like, I know my wife, uh, when she started her practice, I always like assumed like she'll be calm, you know, when we have, you know, our arguments and stuff like that. But as time went on, I, I realized it's, it's not possible. It, it doesn't, doesn't work that way. That's not the, the reality of how, how, how we feel emotion. Yep, so, so coming back to your, to your practice, like how often do you practice it and what type of, uh, and what type of practice do you prefer? Uh, so I teach two classes a week. Um, so I do a kids class and an adults class. And then my own personal practice is generally two hours a week. So two classes. Um, and one class is very structured where my other class is more of what am I feeling today and what do I feel like I need to work on? Uh, so yeah, split it into those categories. Uh, in terms of styles of yoga, I really love Hatha yoga. It's also what I teach is Hatha Yoga. Um, so Hatha Yoga is more of a foundational style of yoga. You, it's slow pace compared to your more dynamic practice of vinyasa or power yoga. And you tend to hold the postures for longer. Um, and when you hold in the postures for longer, you tend to, it's, it results in more stretching, deeper stretching, and also in helping the body build more strength. Um, so the, the word Hatha is a, the, this, it's made up of two Sanskrit words, which is Ha, which is sun, and that's your male stronger energy, and Ta, which is moon, which is the feminine and your more divine softer energy. Um, and so Hatha bringing together is balancing of those energies, so that male female energy balancing the mind, body, and your breath um, as you do your practice and your asana. So you're really trying to balance all those components in. Um, and I think that for me is a really beautiful experience if you can get that all, you know, feeling complete and balanced. Um, some, day, some days we feel more dominant and have our male energy, even as a female, you, you might experience more male energy on some days. And some days you're feeling more emotional and men can have more of that too. And I think, you know, having this practice to just bring you down and root you into a space, um, that's very really beautiful to have. So important note, uh, important note to take from you in that in that uh, is that uh, the balance of uh, male and female energies you know growing up in brown households we don't really we aren't really taught that like to have a male energy or have a female energy i think as human beings we have both yes um, and there are certain times when even males like you said or even uh, females have a, a stronger male energy at times and males have like a little bit of vulnerability to them which is okay to have because i think growing up we were never shown that it's okay or we never told like 
uh, it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to be, you know, sad or feel sad. Uh, I'm not going to say going because I'm always like trying to like be mindful of like we feel things. We're not we not are those things we feel more of those things that's our feeling and that's if we talk to ourselves like that we don't we don't place ourselves in uh, we don't put ourselves in buckets of like oh i'm an angry person or i'm i'm a vulnerable person all the time it's just a feeling that that we have and i think that's why also why i started this this part these these talks is to is to enlighten people to say you know a lot of the time what we go through when when we in our communities especially uh like you said, the, like I said, the brown communities, it's it's very, uh, I'll say, um, um, very straightforward in terms of like what's needed of us as as people or as a as a gender. You know, like yeah. the males will do a certain thing or the females will do a certain things. Whereas now, it's all cross pollinated. So yeah. a lot of the males are now taking on more female responsibilities, and more females are taking on male responsibilities. But it doesn't mean we we're crossing over. No, it doesn't mean that. We just cross-pollinating and we're helping each other out in that sense so i think like you said the feelings and vulnerabilities that you you go through and the yoga practices i think it brings it all along to to some sort of yin and yang balance you know kind of way exactly exactly yep and even you know some days the, the some days you feel like you know you can be at the gym and you're running a marathon and um and i think that's that's the male energy that's the sun that we work with and other days you're just feeling tired and you just want to, you know, do a bit of that yoga stretches and maybe not even do anything and hit the bed. And that's like that moon energy. Um, so it's, it's also like, I, sometimes it's not even that physical gender, but just the, you know, that, that high energy or a bit more of a karma energy that we play with. Yeah. I want to go back to the point where you said you had a bit of a, an incident and you, you know, you, you, had a bit of anxiety and when she left you, you know, temporarily um, with temporary paralysis. Um, a lot of people probably wouldn't know that about you. Uh, and thank you for sharing that. I know it's sometimes not easy to share those experiences on public platforms, but uh, thank you for, for doing so. And uh, I think it will help somebody know that even if, even if you go through something so, so severe in your life, that, you know, something like simple thing like yoga and meditation, uh, can help you through that process, you know, to to understand um, that what you what you went through is okay, but there's always a, a way to find yourself towards the light, if if you know what I mean. Yeah. So, thank you for sharing that, and um, if if uh, if it helps somebody out there, uh, you know, thank you. Yeah, definitely. I feel like um, we tend to feel ashamed when we can't cope with things and we hide it and um, our bodies let it out in its own way, right? And it's only until we're able to listen to our body and not feel ashamed and to be act actually, I am suffering with this and I am going through this. So how can I get better? How, what can I do to heal? And what can I do so I don't repeat, like my, I help my body and I support my body. Right. And yeah, I think that's so important. So and like there isn't, like you said, there's nothing to be ashamed about it. Um, I think it's about, for me, I think the one thing why I didn't tell people was I wanted to be that person in the corporate space that could do it all. You know, <laughs> I wanted to show up and I wanted to be like, yeah, I can do this. I can do this. Um, but eventually your body just can't, right? And you have to take a step back. And that's exactly what it did. And I think having the knowledge has now prevented that from happening again. So I'm not saying my stress or my anxiety goes away, but it's not as severe as it used to be. So I'm allowed, I'm able to control those things through my to my pranayama my breath work and and a bit of movement and it becomes a uh, a more manageable practice yeah. right yes. like when anxiety i know for me i'm like i take medication for my anxiety um i was i was very reluctant to do so in the beginning because you know how people people say like oh why are you taking you know just get over it and you know you need to do certain a b and c and, yeah. you know you'll be fine but it doesn't work that way like for some people, some people will be able to like manage their anxiety without the help of, of, of medication and some people need it. And that's okay. Right. It's not like, it's not like you, you're going to be this crazy person that's on medication anymore when it comes to that, that form of mental health. I think uh, the stigma around mental health. And I feel that when, when we speak about our experiences, it just gives somebody else 
uh, a feeling that hey, they're not alone, you know. And I think that's why my that's why I started this journey, uh, and I feel like it's going to help somebody understand that they, it's okay to be not okay, you know, and not feel ashamed of like asking for help. Yeah. In that sense. Um, so I think we what what we what we're trying to do here is just to make people feel safe in their in their own insecurities. Yep. So yeah, I think that that's very important for for a lot of people to like understand it's it's okay. Definitely. But, so I know a lot of people are like who probably watch this were like, okay, how do I get going? <laughs> how do I start? <laughs> like even if they've never had this practice before, like what advice would you give to somebody who's like who's interested in getting into this practice and yoga and you know? I think um, yoga has become a lot more accessible uh, to everyone. So I think that the first thing would be just unroll your mat. Don't have any fears. Take your mat. Um, get a yoga mat if you don't, step one. Um, and then, you know, get onto the mat. Um, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, yoga classes out there. There's a lot of online content. So a lot of videos and things that you can find online if you don't want to go to a studio and um, start your practice off at home. Um, I'm going to shamelessly say you can join my classes, my yoga classes, um, over my mom's practice with holistic healing connection or, you know, your more of the meditation side. Um, but I think it's just about showing up for yourself and not having that fear. Don't set expectations that on day one, you need to be able to touch your toes or, you know, do a headstand. It's really about listening to your body at that moment and building your practice daily and slowly. Um, I think if you speak to any yogi as well, no matter how many years they've been doing it for, some days it feels like you're a complete beginner because your body is just not allowing you to do certain things. And those are the days you listen to it and you have a more gentle practice. And so I think for beginners, just join any beginners class and show up for yourself and don't have any expectations and don't, it's, it's not about comparing yourself to the next person on the mat. It's just about what you're feeling in that moment and what you need to release and surrender into. Full disclaimer, the links to all the sales pitch <laughs> will be in the description below. <laughs> so please, yeah, guys, check them out, check out those, those, uh, those links and yeah, trust me, uh, a lot of information, uh, in there. Um, and also I know Milan, you also have a, a YouTube channel with yoga practices as well. So I'll, I'll add those to the description as well. So okay. guys, check that out and yes, yeah, support her and follow her channel. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome anytime. So with meditation, um, you know, some people will sit there and just like, okay, my mind is not quiet. It should be quiet. Whereas people get like concerned, like if they're doing it right or wrong, you know, uh, how, has, how has meditation completed your yoga practice in your overall journey? Yeah. Um, so meditation, like, you know, I know, I know I was doing it since a kid, but somewhere along the line, the practice got less and when I started it more practicing meditation as an adult, I actually struggled and I struggled for a long time where I couldn't sit and focus because my mind was just so active. And I started then doing two things. The one thing was realizing that you don't have to be still to be in meditation. I don't need to have my eyes closed um, to be in, in a meditative state. And that be that's because the, the idea of meditation is actually about not judging your thoughts letting go of that control of your thoughts. So, you know, trying to find that stillness, but it doesn't mean that you have to sit with your eyes closed, legs crossed, straight back up, you know? Um, and I think that's what made it easier for me. So I started then taking, okay, as I do my yoga practice and that mindful movement, when I'm connecting my breath and focusing on my breath, that's a form of meditation and that's a state of meditation. Um, and then what I actually, what really helped me with my meditation practice is to do, was to also do chanting. Um, so I would generally take a, a mala or a string of beads with 108 beads on it. And I would take a mantra that's meaning, meaningful for me. Um, and I would chant and sit with my eyes closed. And, you know, that chanting helped me to give me a point of focus. And it helped me to clear my mind because then I stopped thinking about everything else that was happening that was you know, clouding up this headspace, um, and it gave me a moment to focus on that. So I think, you know, meditation can come in various forms. And if you're struggling to sit down, maybe to go for a walk, you know, and just listen to some calming music as you walk and try to center your thoughts, because that's also a form of meditation. Um, and I think what I'd also, what I 
you know, a little bit of advice is also, if you do want to do a bit of mindful meditation, start off with guided meditations, because those help you, you know, bring your focus into, into place and help you to, you know, surrender into the thoughts, to let go of the thoughts that generally are harder to do if you're just going into complete silence or complete meditation yourself. No, amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, you're right. I think meditation is not one form. It's many forms. It can be like my form of meditation would be exercise or being active. That's where my mind is like really quiet. Like I can, I can really like turn off the world when I'm in that space. Whereas I think other people would be like, okay, sitting in a, in a calm space, um, you know, just with nature or whatever. And that's, that's how they turn off their mind. Yes. Um, so I don't think it's a one foot all um practice i think you just need to find something that that you feel that when i do this my mind turns off you know yes. and and that's your mind that's your meditation practice it doesn't have to be like we're sitting in in the himalayas you know on the on everest in you know like shiva or something just meditating for like eons and eons it yes. you don't have to, you don't have to be <laughs> it doesn't have to be that intense you know it, it could yes. be a simple thing as just like cleaning you know you know or cooking or something and that's form of meditation yeah it's funny you speak about the Himalayas because I recently, actually it was a few, three years ago, I was in Rishikesh and sitting at the Ganga every night, um, listening to the evening art, art, art with, you know, with, in front of the Shiva statue and really trying to focus, but struggling. Like I struggled to sit there in meditation. Um, we did take a drive up the Himalayas. Uh, we were going to a temple. And on that drive was actually a moment where I had experienced this sense of enlightenment or this clarity oh, wow. of mind. And I was literally sitting in the front seat of this car. Um, the windows were all down. It was a really old car, no air conditioning. It was super hot. So the windows were all down. And it was just this windy road um, going up. And in that moment, I actually thought it was a while that I actually experienced this complete stillness in my mind. I had no thought of anything that was happening anything that I have to go back, you know, to doing, it was just being so present and feeling that that wind come through those windows and just watching this windy road. Um, and that for me was such a moment where I was like, I have a sense of freedom. Wow. And I think that's what we try to get with meditation. Amazing. So I'm going to share a similar story of mine. So we traveled to Vancouver, I think la yeah, last year, August, September ish. And we decided to do a whale watching, uh, expedition and it's the, like on, when we when we set out uh into the open water and like heading towards trying to like find these these orcas and you know the whales and stuff there's a moment on the water where i felt like the most peaceful i've ever felt in my entire life um everything just was so calm like i've never felt that i don't know how to exp how to explain the feeling but it's just something that it's just something that happened and i like you know, I'm truly blessed and grateful for for having to have that that experience. I think a lot of people don't uh, can't get that noise out of their head, okay. and they they can't find that peace. Um, but it's when when you are you find peace in the least expected moment. <laughs> you know, it's it's just something that's that happens, and when when it does happen, you'll be like, okay, you know, I'm 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 okay. Yes, yeah, definitely. So I know with with other with your mindful practice, I know you're also busy with in the corporate life, and um, you know you're an avid traveler as well, and, and as well. So, you know, besides besides this, your practice and in, in yoga and meditation, what other you know what other activities do you do you bring to your to your life just to bring some balance into it? Yeah. Um. So I think, like I, I started off saying that yoga and meditation was just tools, amongst other things, in this well-being journey, and um, one thing that I'm a firm believer in is creating a ritual for yourself, a daily ritual. And for me, that's an evening ritual. And every evening I light a candle, switch off my devices, and I would normally do my chanting at this time. And after that, I sit with a gratitude journal and I write down three things that I'm grateful for that happened in the day. And that for me was a big game changer and it really, switched my mindset and um i used to be a person that would complain a lot i'm being like full disclosure i used to complain about silly things or little things and my family would be like oh yeah here she goes again and i've been doing this practice now for about six years and after like the second year of doing it 
my family noticed that I stopped this behavior of complaining over little things. And um, my partner at that time also noticed it and acknowledged and was like, oh, wow, like you haven't said something about something. And I think just having that, that practice of gratitude really changes a lot in, in my day to day as well. Um, so I think find a ritual that helps you to either wind down from your day or to have a good start into your day. Okay. Um, and the second thing that I, I really recommend is having a mindful coffee. Um, so we generally take the coffee and you know, have it on the go or you carry on working, but actually sit with your coffee and take five minutes, have five or 10 minutes just to drink your coffee, but be mindful about it. So take in your senses, um, what, are, what are you currently seeing in this environment? What are you feeling in terms of, can you feel that breeze? Is the coffee hot in your hand? Um, how does it taste? What do you smell? What are you hearing in your, like go through your senses and literally ask yourself these questions and answer them. And you'll find how much, like you, your mind just starts to become more focused and you feel like you've, okay, you stepped away from your desk for, but you've been able to do this, have this bit of a break and then go back. And you already see like you, you're more focused then in your next task because you've just taken a moment to ground yourself. So. I really recommend things like doing something like that and then breathing. So breathing is something that you can just, you know, do at any time that you need when you're on a plane at airport, you know, work, go into a meeting room, you know, put yourself on a 10 minute timer if you need to, and just take a few deep breaths. Yeah. No, amazing. Yeah. Like you said, like just being in the moment, just enjoying your coffee takes me back to the, the technique that I learned is the five senses uh, technique just to bring yourself, just to know where you are in terms of reality. Because um, sometimes we think too far ahead or we have, you know, intrusive thoughts or whatever. And we forget that in the moment where we are. So it's, you know, we forget that, okay, it's, it's clear, it's, there's traffic outside or, you know, I'm, I'm in my home, I can feel, or say, just say you're taking a shower, like feel the water on your skin, you know, feel the, smell the soaps the soaps you know you know just simple things like that just to bring you back to to reality because i think we sometimes live too far like when we go through trauma especially we live too far behind in the past where we keep replaying the same the same scenario over and over and over and or sometimes we like too anxious about what's going to happen in the future that we forget that we need to live in the present yes that, that hasn't happened yet you know it, it's not reality it's just your mind telling you or the fears you know so you, you go into that flight of, uh, fight or flight uh, mode where, you, where you're like, okay, what if this happens? What if that happens? And it's not reality. Yeah. But like you said, just sitting with your coffee, you'll find peace in that because there's no danger. Yes. Yeah. So amazing. I think, I think we, we, we kind of have similar, similar practices. Um, yeah. But I think that's because I've, I've come to you guys to like learn those practices as well. Yeah. <laughs> so I know like, you have a lot of, we have a lot of resources out there in the world right now. Is anyone that you would recommend? Yeah. Um, so other than my, my open consciousness and holistic healing connection, um, I, I do, I, I highly recommend an app called Habit Tracker. And um, for me, I think well-being needs to be consistent. It doesn't happen once and you feel good and you move on. It has to be consistent and Habit Tracker is amazing where you could say okay i need to make sure eight day i'm gonna have to have eight glasses of water every day i want to do my ritual i want to do this um and then to track that and see your progress um sometimes people i'm one of them i get driven by this thing of like ticking off something and that motivates me to want to do more of it um so i highly recommend that and then there's quite a bit of resources out so in terms of yoga and meditation as well there's a lot of youtube channels that you know you could you could go onto. Um, and I think it's just about finding one that you connect with. So an instructor that, you know, you, you connect because sometimes yoga practices are similar, but you really try and it's like the, the teacher would make a difference on how you, if it relates to you or not. Um, but there's a lot out, there's a lot of, uh, free resources as well. That's out there. Yeah. yeah you make an important point about connecting to your teacher as well. I think if you, if you don't have a, a good experience, it, it kind of like puts doubt in your mind whether you know you want to continue so i think it's important to 
not give up even if you don't have a good experience the first time around just you know keep keep trying keep trying yeah. and you will find the the one that's that's made for you i guess that's important a lot of the times like you said we or i say like we give up when we don't find something the first time around because we like also perfectionists we want we want things to happen you know we don't want anything any anything to happen basically and we like when something does happen that's not in our control that we like we get anxious and we're like no i'm 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 done with this but it's about staying consistent with the practice and finding 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 your 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 center basically definitely and i think that what that comes with when we find that center it comes with community support as well we start to like find you know uh, like-minded people and then we start to like gain different perspectives um and in your term, in your sense like how have you found a, a support community or like do you have like a you know people that you can count on yeah so you definitely have a good point that community plays a really big part in your wellness journey um it's also so important to let the people around you know that you're on this journey because they can support you in small ways um i think having for me it's been my family having my family to support me uh, on various different journeys that I go through and then knowing where I'm at at that moment, they've been able to support and help me. Having friends around. So we tend to we tend to have friends for different things or diff, you know, you have friends for this or friends for that. Um, and I think it's important to have friends that support you on this wellness journey too. Friends that you can really talk to and open up. Um, and also friends to push you when you feel like, you know, you you spiraling yeah. out yeah. um and i think that's important to have the right friends for that um for me community is also important i think that's why i started urban consciousness was to find people i mean it was about finding a safe space where we could share practices to help each other especially in this hustle that we're always in so we're always in this like busyness so you know we're hustling for everything in life right now and it's just about taking that moment to find a community to support you to to the safe space where you can grow um and you can just be yourself and i think that's really, that's what's really important to find people where you can be yourself and show up as your true authentic self yeah 100% agree with that i think also when you when you begin your journey like you'll have you'll have a, a group that wide and then as as you go into the journey your 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 support groups get smaller and smaller because you realize that uh, the not everybody is going to be on the same wavelength as you um and it's not like you 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 tossing them aside like no you're not my friend anymore or, or you're not my you know i don't want to do anything with you anymore it's just that you yourself know that what's best for you now right now and you'll align to people uh that's like minded um and that also like you said you need guidance and support and you can reach out to them um cuz i know growing up like being in being active and being with in sports you know all the time you being in sports teams and that you you constantly around people um but they're not like those people that you can sometimes always count on you know mm. and i felt like okay i always thought that those are the people that you can count on you know when something goes wrong um and only now recently that i found like two friends that i've got that like if something happens you know i can reach out to them and they'll give me like a really honest and and uh, feedback whether it be good or bad um but they know that they they have the best interest they have my best interest at heart and i think being honest with with the next person is is very important even if it even if it's something uh, a small criticism that they need to hear it has to be said because that's the only way we grow like we grow from failure failure is not it's not a bad thing we grow i think much more from failure than victories victories are good to celebrate but i think your your failures are like what help you grow yeah if that makes sense definitely i like victories are always a way to to reinsure that you're on the right path right or you're doing the right thing um and failure that's when you keep growing to the next level um, yeah 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 no yeah you make an important point like to say when victories are are there for you to and what's next you know yeah what's my next level um so i know what a healthy lifestyle i know how important is having goals towards for what you want to achieve how important is it to you like do you have any like specific goals in mind or do you have anything that you have uh, you know planned for the future yeah um so for my own personal well-being i think 
it's just to be consistent uh to keep showing up for myself daily and i think that's a huge goal like you know to set out that time for yourself each day um a lot of us just take it for granted so to continue to be more consistent and um to also add a little bit more cardio into my wellness bucket of things i tend to go more to the the yoga and the the, the, the more calming and relaxing things um but for my own wellness which is also health related um i think i really do need to focus on on cardio <laughs> as my next goal walking is cardio as well that's the... <laughs> yes and um I, I live in a city where i, I, I get I'm lucky enough to walk a lot but um i feel like i still need to just get that heart rate a bit up <laughs> i know in amsterdam biking is uh is like the, the best pastime people i mean it's notorious for biking yeah. maybe that, maybe you could do uh get into some yeah get into some biking <laughs> yeah i have um i discovered muscles that didn't know existed <laughs> that's what happens when we start to push ourselves <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and take ourselves out of comfort zones definitely but no um amazing and thank you so much for you know for accepting my invitation and joining me on this podcast uh, i think you've given us some valuable insight and um i just want to say a big thank you to you to coming on super grateful and super humble and um and i hope uh and i hope you all the best for the future as well and i uh, yeah. and we hope to see you soon thank you so much thanks for having me on and i'm really happy and grateful that i was able to share my story and hopefully help people along the way amazing thank you so much thank all you all right take care next time bye, bye.